Hello, Sandra. Thank you so much for joining us. So the Beyonce of social selling. We are so honored and happy to have you here today. So can you probably kindly introduce yourself and Snap Advantage? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Uh, my name is Sandra and I'm a digital marketer and an e-com entrepreneur. I have built my own e-commerce brands from zero dollars in revenues to seven figures in sales in one year um, with own money, myself and my partner's money um, by bootstrapping. And in between, I had many, many failed attempts to uh, build profitable businesses because that typically is a journey. Um, I'm also the co-founder of Snap Advantage, which is a digital marketing agency based in um, Ontario, Canada. And that's where I spend my time mostly today. Um, I work with uh, brands and businesses that are looking to scale. We help them grow profitably uh, by diversifying traffic sources and building money-making digital assets. So specifically, we deliver services like social media marketing, influencer marketing, email and text marketing, content, paid media, but also fractional CMO services. Wow, sounds already so awesome. <laughs> and I was so excited to read about your business itself growing three times in just one year. So I was super yeah. excited to, yes, um, to hear some of your growth and scaling and everything. But also because we are, most of us are translators, right? So as a social media marketing and standout expert, you might have some good advice for us too. How would you feel we can stand out while still being our authentic self and how highlighting our own expertise as language experts? Would you have some tips for that first? Yeah, yeah. Well, you really said the keywords there when you said being our authentic self. And I really think that is the best way to stand out online uh, by being our authentic selves because, well, first of all, everyone else is taken. But um, also when you are being your your own authentic self um, in you know, real life and online, um, you talk from a position of expertise that applies to a very niche target audience that you serve, that needs to hear things from you that only you have to offer. So then you'll stand out. And I know that, you know, talking about oneself uh, is not everybody's cup of tea and uh, it can sound very self-centered. So when I say being your authentic self, I don't necessarily mean just talk about your personality or talk about yourself. But what I mean is really speak about the problems that you know your target audience has that you are in a unique position to, to solve. So be niche and um, also not being afraid to be bold and take a stance on you know items in your industry that maybe are a little bit controversial when you are the expert and you know what you're talking about. Um, and um, you know, doing it with your own personality, again, your own authentic personality. So if you're more quirky, you know, don't be afraid to add uh, a little joke here and there. Um, if you like to write a lot or talk a lot and really come off as uh, an authority or expert figure, um, don't be um, intimidated by the algorithms mm. and thinking that, you know, they, they prefer shorter copy and you can't write too much. Be your authentic self. Think about the problems that you solve and speak from that position of expertise to your target audience that wants to hear from you. Mm. And uh, that, that, that would be my advice. Wow. Yes. Uh, always keep in mind our own target audience so that, you yeah. know, we can yes. be still honest about ourselves, but also, you know, connect in some way and solve their problems from how exactly. we see it. Yes. So moving on to the growth topic, the exciting part also. So you have a great experiences in helping, you know, many, many businesses grow their sales by leveraging digital marketing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so and you know much about the influencer marketing, which is a huge part mm -hmm. of, you know, this world, we say. Right. Yes. So um, how is the business sales goal relevant with the digital marketing? I was just curious for myself too because you know these days we are all into you know growing our business through digital marketing and probably mm -hmm. you know we need to pick up some knowledge about influencer marketing digital marketing how we properly um, position ourselves through our digital presence and whatnot so for example how much do we have to invest our time and money for our digital presence would be your recommendation from how you see it 
Mm -hmm. It really depends on your business. Every business is different and every business has different needs. Um, some businesses need to invest 100% of their marketing dollars to go to digital presence. Um, otherwise, they don't make sales. And some businesses don't need to invest a lot of time, energy, and all the resources in creating an online presence. The key is really understanding your target audience inside and out. So that means understanding the problems that they have that you are in a unique position to solve, um, but also where they hang out online, on which social media platforms. Are they lurkers and do they follow pages and then just kind of click when they need something? Or are they contributors and they're active on places like Reddit or Facebook groups? Um, also keep in mind how your audience um, likes to receive communication is it over video over text over email so once you answer that then you can start building your presence on the channels where you know your audience that also has an intent to buy hangs out and give them what they need again it, the amount of time and resource and energy really depends on your goals as a business and on your resource availability as a business um, but the very next step then would be to track your steps um, and track your progress in with your online presence investment. So um, that would be your time, your money, and other resources, right? So you have to find those activities that move the needle and only do those. And from there, scale up. Um, because building an online presence, there's no set formula. It really comes down to treating it like any other marketing project where it has to be that methodical with a strategy in mind. It has to be data driven and um, you have to sign KPIs. You have to measure KPIs and make really stone cold decisions on what works for you and what doesn't. Um, so you may find that uh, your business, you know, gets enough referrals and word of mouth and you only need to invest like a small fraction of time and energy and resources mm -hmm. in building a digital presence or you may find that um if you're not a constantly exposing your brand your business yourself to your audience you're missing out on sales so mm -hmm. um no, no set formula. I wish the answer was as easy as giving you like yes, a percentage yes, or a formula. Mm -hmm. It's really <laughs> hard, but what's important is to understand where is your audience, be there for them, communicate mm -hmm. it way they want to be communicated to, and really track and measure your activities. So even your posting, your impressions, your clicks, your sales, your signups, those are all KPIs that are important to pretty much every entrepreneur, uh, business, and, and professional and really look at it objectively and, and figure out what works, what moves the needle towards your goal and only do those activities. And you'll find that when you really find what clicks and what moves the needle for you, um, you're not going to shy away from investing in your online presence, whether that means money or time. Exactly. Wow. Very, very important um, tip there because you really um, know have to know where to hang out from how yeah. I hear it, right? So yes. where to spend your time to, you know, make the most of your digital presence and investment exactly. of your time and everything else. So exactly. I am um, sure that you have more than complex, you know, statistic tools and what whatnot to, you know, analyze and really apply this. But from like, I have no like in-depth knowledge in terms of digital marketing. So um, take away one most important takeaway for me today is really know your space, know where yes. you are, know your exactly people, where are they in exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah. where do, yes. do they exist and connect with them and, you know, start sharing something relevant to them? So, exactly. Yeah. And just to add to your point about complicated uh, tracking and measuring tools, um, if you're talking about social media or even other digital platforms, like let's say email marketing, or if you have an e-commerce store or even a WordPress store, all of these tools, they have their own analytics built in them. Mm -hmm. You don't need to get fancy. Getting fancy is when you want to scale, but uh, knowing your numbers can be something as simple as understanding your website conversion rate. So if you are a, let's say a coach and you sell courses, 
um, or you sell books and know that 2% of visitors that come to your website will convert to a sale, then what you have to do is reverse engineer those numbers. Look at your target goals in terms of subscribers or um, or revenue um, or repeat buyers and um, look at the channels where you want to be present and assign um, a, a goal that goes in line with that mm. for those platforms. So if you're, for instance, looking to drive traffic from LinkedIn, um, and you know, 2% of, uh, of, of people that go on your website will buy your course and you want, you know, 20 people to buy your course this month, for instance, so that you know that in order to get 20 people, you need a thousand uh, people on your website, right? So then when you go on your, um, on your LinkedIn or your Instagram and other social platforms, your job is to get a thousand people to your website because you know, 2% convert and that will give you those 20 sales. It can be as simple as that. Wow. So know your numbers, know your goals yes. and do some yes. reverse engineering. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, so this is already my last question. I have so many, like I can keep going on, but I cannot take up too much of your time because you're already a busy entrepreneur who's also a digital nomad, I believe, right? Yeah. yeah I won't yes, go too deep into that because, you know, like, but would you like to, like, would you be willing to share some of your life too? Because I yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. any questions in particular you want me to talk yes, about or? Um, you've yeah. been to more than thirty countries right in sixteen months which is amazing I think because most of us are digital nomads too so can you share a little bit part of that part of your life if that yeah helps. absolutely so um I've actually been in thirty plus Airbnbs not thirty countries oh right I'm sorry it's yes, yes, on, yes. yeah it's definitely <laughs> yeah there was a little on, bit of the, yeah confusion no, about the it's, plural it's right there. it's How a goal it's yes. a goal I probably hit about twenty countries though so oh. yes I my first uh, my first uh, digital nomad experience was mm -hmm. actually in 2017 in Bali where um, I stayed for about four months then I went to Thailand then went back to Canada um, and for the last about sixteen months I've been actually in Eastern Europe and uh, we've been in more than thirty homes I primarily Airbnbs and we just kind of move move around. Um, every month now I find that staying a few days here and there it's a little bit tough but every month I move around with my partner we own our businesses together um, and we we have a routine so we're able to enjoy life with the six hours ahead um, from from you know eastern time in Canada we're able to enjoy life in the morning and then we work um, later um, in the afternoon and at night so it's been uh, it's been a, a ride I can tell you that uh, people do think we're crazy because we're you know two kids in their 30s with uh, <laughs> with a 23 um, kilograms in in each luggage just kind of going from country to country but um, the reason why I, I honestly started my own company was so I can travel. Mm -hmm. I was at a mastermind in, in Bali in 20, I think 2016. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I met my um, now partner. He was making money while we were at a beach bar in on a like in, on, on Bali Island and I was like man I want to make money when I'm not working too yeah. <laughs> so the moment we got back to Canada I, I said I have to quit my job I loved my job but I quit my job and I started working uh on my own with him and in between I did have a couple of jobs because things didn't work as well as we planned as they often don't when you're an entrepreneur um but it, we went back to what we really wanted to do which is being a digital nomad so yeah, I'm in Bosnia and Herzegovina right now in Sarajevo. And my next uh, destination will be Belgrade, Serbia. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You're such an inspiration for all of us. They will feel so relevant to you. I mean, they'll love this story of yours. Thank you so much for sharing. Wow. More than 30 homes and more than 20 countries since 2017, right? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I uh, I wanted to do more, but um, over the last year with the world reopening, it's been a little bit tough to be in, this, in, in Western Europe. Mm -hmm. So for us, because we do have uh, a team, uh, we have a team of 10 people, we have two businesses, we have a lot of clients, I can't really play around with um, other people's schedules and other people's expectations of me. So I, you know, when I when I heard about a lot of um you know, problems with airports and strikes and so on and restrictions. Um, we said let's hold off on adding on um adding on more new locations for now. Let's go with the locations that we know. Mm -hmm. And we can still like travel around within like certain countries, but kind of keep towards Eastern Europe. But definitely want to hit up Western Europe next year. And oh, wow. I do want to go back to Bali. That's how my heart is. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's up there. It's up there. <laughs> I see. I'm going to Bali, by the way, in December. You are? What? Yes, yeah, just for a little over 10 days in December. I'll nice. be there for yeah, early Your first December. time? my first time i'm definitely oh, so ex super excited it. about it yeah i kind of love it i you're might even send you it. some pictures or just, just post some yes. pictures about bali you yes you'll you you'll, have to yes you'll hear about it so thank you so much for yeah. being such an inspiration for us but also i'm thinking because you're you you mentioned at one point in one of your videos actually i i watched it i loved it so much so thank you again for sharing um you mentioned your business is a boutique agency you know boutique yeah. or niche a marketing agency i'm seeing it growing ever more right so yeah. do you have yeah. like it's just uh, out of my own curiosity too do you yeah. have like plan to sometimes settle down just to you know to grow this business even more because you already have you know a team of more than 10 people right or yeah of 10 people yeah, we're we're growing because I I I have a hard time saying no to awesome projects, and I know that sounds yeah. sounds funny, but I you know like I learn about a business like oh my god I love what they're doing I love how they want to scale so I want to help them. Um, sure. We actually were a little bit bigger than we are right now, and oh. we tried to hyper hyper growth, um, which um, didn't work as well for us because I still like to be involved in every project, mm -hmm. and our clients like us to be involved in every project because one of the things that make our agency unique and that's the tricky part with agencies is if you only offer one service it's easy to just duplicate it you know copy paste the copy paste and the mm -hmm. system as the heck out exactly. of it but with us um we you know because we are entrepreneurs and we mm -hmm. have uh businesses that we grew businesses that failed we understand e-commerce especially from so many different angles that we don't just offer social media we are for some of our clients they're cro's right myself mm -hmm. and surge mm -hmm. so um i i learned that i can grow indefinitely so there's definitely a cap on how many clients we can take mm -hmm. uh, but we are still growing with the project so we find exactly. that our clients as they're growing they have more needs so they add more projects um mm -hmm. onto our virtual trays and we're still not at capping and capacity yet mm -hmm. but we are going to cap either at the end of this year or uh, beginning of next year and then we'll just have to uh, balance it out because Serge and I also have other businesses that we are working on and um, that's our sweet spot with our agency um, is where either myself or him can still be involved as project managers and we um, we can help our clients with our own experiences and expertise as well. Exactly. Okay. So some exciting, um, like, I think there might be some more exciting news for your side some in some near future. And you already have many things going on. And this collaboration with Maple it is also yes. yeah, super exciting. Can you share a little bit about that too? If that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maple is one of my absolute favorite partners. <laughs> uh, there are a probably the fastest growing marketplace for mm -hmm. marketers and um and companies that need marketing services so um what's really cool about them is that they 
if you're a business, um, they match you with an expert that has expertise and experience in your industry, in your niche. Mm. So if you need specific skills or you need a specific background, um, chances are there is a marketer with that background because there are hundreds of marketers in there on their platform. Mm. Um, now, everybody is vetted. So every marketing expert on the Maple platform um, is, is vetted with like a series of like interviews and you have to uh, prove that you are, know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing good data mm -hmm. and yeah. then they also manage the whole road for you as a um, um as a business from um you know and, uh, figuring out what projects you need to finding an expert to managing that expert as well so um maple and snap we have a beautiful collaboration mm -hmm. um they are awesome awesome people and um we a lot of our clients um came through through maple so what i also like is that for the projects that we can deliver on in our own agency i know that there are other marketers just as qualified um to help our clients so then i have the confidence that if i can deliver it then there's another maple expert i can work with us uh, so we can deliver a good project together mm -hmm awesome yeah. okay thank you so much for sharing a lot about your business and what you do and what we can look for about so any less um um so any other social media related like questions we can ask you about or what services you specifically offer um can i ask because you know sometimes there are yeah. many many digital marketing companies so like yeah. what can we really look for in your services is my last question yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely so um for us um so the services that we offer um social media influencer marketing um content paid media and um email marketing and text marketing but also fractional cmo where we act as your um as your cmo and help you make decisions strategies and hire a marketing team um uh, if uh, if you're wondering what questions i i can tell you the questions that i get asked a lot yeah <laughs> um, one of them being one of them being the um I, I I think I've been getting this question since like day one that I started doing this, which was in 2016. Um, do I really need social media presence? And oh, yes, very, very big but very important one. Very important. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, 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 you do. Um, so I get this question a lot. You know, I'm not an online person, or, or you know, I don't get a lot of appointments for customers from having an online presence especially on social media but um you know having a presence on social media today really is like having a website 10 years ago mm -hmm. um i have a client that calls it the the necessary evil but uh, look there's like over like 3 billion people on facebook alone on exactly. a monthly yes right like instagram mm -hmm. has like 1.5 billion uh twitter uh, and, and pinterest the smaller platforms like three four hundred million so mm -hmm. if you're not present and active where your target audience is then how are they going to find you so exactly. yes you absolutely do mm -hmm. now the degree to which you need to be involved in social media may may be different and again you don't have to do it on your own you can always hire an expert um so that's one question that i get asked a lot and um Another question that relates to our services is um, what's the most requested service nowadays? And I can say that probably 80% of the requests that I've had in the last two months have been for influencer marketing. Um, brands, entrepreneurs, professionals, they, they, they're they starting to understand that uh, most people trust the opinion of others, even though mm. they're influencers or brand ambassadors, mm. a lot more than they trust the opinion of, of brands uh, mm. for obvious reasons. Um, so it's something around 70% of people trust the opinion of others more than they trust traditional advertising. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of um, the efforts and services that our agency right now revolve around um, creating partnerships for our clients for sales purposes or for content creation because sending products to a micro-influencer or a content creator is mm -hmm. cheaper than sending products to a studio or booking a studio mm -hmm. um, so those would be the most common questions that I probably get like a couple times a week <laughs> thousand times more than thousand times a so lot far. Yeah. a lot yeah. yes tens yeah. of thousand times but thank you so much yeah. for answering the question for us again it really helped 
And, you know, I'm so glad. Yes. Um, I really hope a lot of language experts start using social media properly thanks to this interview with you. So thank you so much again, Sandra. Thank you. Oh, thank you best. so much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank, thank you, you again for the opportunity. <laughs> thank you so much. I'll see you again and I'll thank be you. yes, sharing this um, video with my LinkedIn Perfect. connections. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds great. And you have fun in Bali, okay? Yes. <laughs> thank you. You know how you like it. You gotta message me. Let me know how you like okay, it. Okay, definitely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you. Bye. See ya.